Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I'm giving some tips on how to take better photos of your kids. Or anyone, really. So since it is back to school time, no matter how weird that looks this year, I've got these free printable first day of school signs over on my blog, and then I also have a coordinating last day of school one as well, so you can save it for later. And part of having signs is taking pictures of your kids holding the signs. So these are some really great tips of some things to consider when you are taking those photos, or again, any photos, and they are not complicated. Not at all. So I used my camera for most of the photos that you'll see in this video, but that camera is recording me. I also used my phone for a bunch of the photos. So none of these tips have anything to do with camera settings or the way that you physically take the photo. They're all happening outside of a camera. All right, before we get into it, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would so love it if you did that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. This video is made in partnership with Walmart Photo Center, and so any of the products that I'm using in this video were made using their same day photo services. All right, so the first tip is all about indoor lighting. If you're taking your photos inside, the first thing that I would get you to do is to turn off the light. And that seems counterintuitive because the better lit photo, the better. However, indoor lighting is usually above your head. But lighting above your head can often cause dark circles under your eyes that is just shadows from the overhead lighting. It can also cause weird color casts and things like that, so it's usually easier just to take the second and turn off the overhead lighting and open up some curtains. Once you've opened up your curtains, try to position your kids so that it is either beside them, like it is on me right now, or in front of them for best lighting. If you position the window right behind them, then you'll have backlighting, which can be really cool and beautiful for artistic photos, but it can also blow out the rest of the photo and you can like lose parts of your kid's head or you can have like the halo effect or something like that from the bright lighting. All right, tip number two, outdoor lighting. So most of our back to school photos have been taken outside and that is partly because we have a family of four and the first day of school is rarely clean and tidy. And number two, because we're often renovating so there's not been a lot of years where we've had a great space to take a back to school photo inside of our house. So I march them outside and we try to find like the greenest bush or something to put them in front of. But the things that I look for and the things I'd like you to look for is shade. Avoid full sun if possible because you'll end up with squinting kids with half closed eyes and they'll be frustrated that they can't keep their eyes open and smile nicely like you're asking and you'll be frustrated because you'll probably have harsh shadows on their face from the sun and squinty kids. When you're looking for the shade, look for full shade as opposed to partial shade because partial shade will often have shadows from leaves or things like that that can go across the face and can make it hard to get even lighting. All right, number three, crop in or clear the clutter. So you know those photos from when you were a kid or from when your parents were a kid and when you look at the photo, it's like a photo of a room and then it takes you a second to realize, oh no, there's people in this photo. That is the point of the picture. I'm supposed to be looking at these people. So. If you crop in, then instantly people know what the photo is about. Bonus points, since you're taking photos of your kids on the busy first morning of school, it helps you avoid clutter. And if you are still seeing clutter in your photo, just take that extra second and like push the toy out of the picture or, you know, kick the backpack out of the way or whatever you don't want in the photo. It'll make a big difference in how much you love your photo. If you're still finding after the fact that it is kind of like a busy or cluttered looking photo, even though you've cleared the clutter, what you can do is in post editing add a vignette, um, which just kind of like darkens the edges of the photo just to draw the eye into the center. That's just like a bonus tip. If you are outside and you're trying to avoid the clutter, say vehicles and neighbor's driveway or things like that, you can actually put, get your kids to sit down and kind of shoot down towards them. However, ask them to turn their chin up to you so that you're still shooting face onto them as opposed to like down overhead like this because that's tip number four. Tip number four is to make it fun. So get on their level, get down on your knees. You'll often see professional photographers do this because not only is it more engaging for kids to have somebody down on their level, but it also takes better photos. So instead of having photos where your kids are looking up at you like this, just get down on their level. Like I said, if you are outside and you're trying to like crop out some of the stuff in the background and so you are shooting down towards them, just get them to tilt their chin up at you so you're still eye to eye. 
Other ways to make it fun and make sure that you get a beautiful smiling photo of your children is to tell a joke. This is my favorite thing. I like to save a couple jokes for my kids and I'll usually tell the joke and wait until they're laughing and then say, hey, look at mom say cheese and then I'll take the photo then. This works really well for younger kids that are easily distracted, but it also works well for, you know, kids that are, just don't want to take photos. <laughs> or for kids that have like the photo smile. Do you know what I mean? When you bring out a camera, all of a sudden they get this weird smile and you're like, you don't smile like that. Just do a normal smile and they can't figure it out. If you make them laugh, that normal smile comes naturally. If you're having a really hard time getting them to stay, sit still, pay attention, not make a goofy face, whatever, one of the things that I like to do is I like to alternate with them. Okay, you sit however you want for this one. Sure, okay, let's get the sillies out. Let's make a funny face. Okay, next one is my turn. Sit up straight, say cheese. By taking turns with them, it makes it a little bit more interactive. It makes it a little bit more fun. They feel more in control and it usually results with everybody having a better time as well as nicer photos in the end. This can also go if you have a sibling that doesn't want to get out of the photo, like my toddler did not want to get out of everybody else's photos. You can alternate and do, okay, let's get one with the brothers. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. Good. Okay. Now get out. It's their turn. Being quick is really your friend when you're working with kids. Uh, if you just snap a couple, you see that you've got what you need. You can move on to the next one and just be done. When I do back to school photos with my kids, we're usually done in five minutes or less usually because we're running late for school, <laughs> but regardless, it shouldn't take too long to get a great photo if you know going in where you want them to be and you know that you want them to find shade or you want them to tilt their chin up at you, whichever. If you have the strategies in place before you get started, it should go really quick. All right, so those are my four tips to get better photos of your kids or anyone, and I hope that they helped you whether or not you're taking back to school photos of your kids or any other kind of photos where you're trying to wrangle people and get them looking at the camera. <laughs> if you would like to download these free printable back to school signs, I have the first day of school as well as the last day of school for every age pretty much over on my blog and I will link that in the description below. I'll also put a link in the description below to a written form of this blog post if you would like those four tasks in an easy to read format so you can check them off your list as you are taking back to school photos. And if you have any tips that you have found helpful as you're photographing your kids or anybody else, I'd so love if you dropped it in the comments below and we can all help each other out. Lastly, I will also link a tutorial that I did on how to edit photos on your phone if you'd like to do some basic editing after the fact. Big thank you to Walmart Photo again for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. We'll see you next time.